We continue our discussion of using the zero factor theorem with this example. 6x squared plus 10 equals 17x. Now, to use the zero factor theorem, the first thing we have to do is to get everything on one side so that we have zero on the other side. So we need to move the 17x first. So let's just go ahead and subtract that over. Make sure that whenever you are putting everything on the same side, that you put things or you arrange your terms in descending order. So that's 6x squared minus 17x plus 10 is equal to 0, like that. And now that we have that, we've got a factor. Now, unfortunately, the lead coefficient is not 1, so it's going to be a little bit more difficult for us. But that's okay. We're just going to do the AC method off to the side. So the AC method says we're going to take the 6 and the 10, so 6 times 10. The product is 60, and now we're trying to find those factors of 60 that we're going to add to give us 17. And so the factors of 60 are going to be 5 and 12. These are the numbers that add to 17. So we've got a lot of different ways of working this. I think the most common way is to just take this 17x and rewrite it using the 5 and the 12. So we would start off by saying 6x squared 5x and 12x uh, plus 10 is equal to 0. Now I haven't put the signs here yet so let's address that issue. Uh, whatever the sign is of the middle term is going to match the sign of the larger term once I split it. And also knowing how the signs are supposed to behave to get a negative 17x, that means this guy also has to be a negative. Right? And if we've split this middle term correctly, we should be able to factor by grouping without a problem. So in this first group, the common factor is x. If I factor that out, I'm left with 6x minus 5. In the second group, please make sure you pay attention to the fact that it begins with a negative. So negative and the common factor for 12 and 10 is 2. So we factor out this negative 2, which is going to make this negative 12x become a positive 6x. Positive 10 divided by negative 2 is negative 5. Now we need to make sure we understand that this is the middle part of factoring by grouping and we're not actually done. See, these guys are exactly the same, and so that becomes the factor that we write it that we write in front. So 6x minus 5 times x minus 2 is equal to 0. So the first part here, we got the equation equal to 0. All of this was that process of factoring. And now we actually apply the theorem, where we take each factor and we set it equal to 0. So 6x minus 5 is equal to 0, or x minus 2 is equal to 0. And this is where we are using the actual theorem, right? All right, so what are the solutions that we get? Well, from here, once you go through the process of solving for x, the first thing you do is to add 5, and then you have to divide both sides by 6. Over here, the way that you solve for x is you add 2 to the other side. So these are the two solutions to this equation. Now, we knew we were going to have two solutions because of that guy right there. So that is the highest power that we see. And since this is a polynomial equation, that tells us how many solutions we can expect to have. So we expected two, we got two, so we should be feeling pretty good about that. All right, now the next example is a polynomial that has four terms. Not only that, but you notice here that the highest power is three. So this is a polynomial of degree three. That means we're expected to have three solutions at the end. Well, typically when we have four terms, at least right now in this semester, now later in the semester is a completely different scenario, but right now when you have four terms, there's this expectation that we can factor by grouping. So let's do that just like we did in the previous problem. In the first group, we have a common factor between these guys of x squared. 
and I'm left with 5x plus 3. In the second group that begins with a negative, you have a common factor that is negative, first of all, and what goes into 20 and 12 is 4. And so when we divide or factor out that negative 4, we have positive 5x and positive 3. Now, if you are factoring by grouping, these guys have to be exactly the same. If they're not, then you've done something wrong. Now, if you notice that one of them is, say, 5x plus 3 and the other one is 5x minus 3, like they're really close, that typically means that you missed a sign somewhere. So make sure that you're very careful about that. All right, so 5x plus 3 is that common factor that I pull out front. And this is times x squared minus 4. Now, we really should factor completely, and x squared minus 4 can break down even further. So, we remember that this is the difference of squares, and the difference of squares will break down as x plus 2 and x minus 2 for this example. You would square x to get x squared, you'd square 2 to get 4, so you split that up into the product of these conjugates, x plus 2 and x minus 2. And then using the zero factor theorem, you would set each of these factors equal to 0 and solve. Now I know that uh, there may be some of you out there that are saying, do I need to write each of these equations? Well, no, a lot of times, and really the more you get into this, you probably go straight from the factor here to the solution. At least that's what I do. All right, so here to solve this guy for x, you have to subtract 3, and then you have to divide both sides by 5. Here, we need to subtract 2 on both sides, and finally here, we're going to move the 2 to the other side just by adding it. So we have three solutions to this equation. And the really cool thing about this is that every single one of these guys is going to work. If you replace all of the x's with negative 3 over 5, you replace that x and that one and that one, it's all going to work out to be equal to 0. You replace all of the x's with negative 2, it's also going to be true, and so on.